So the next topic is now focusing on that idea of our, uh, particularly our long run average cost curve now, okay, as opposed to those principles that we did last lesson with regards to the short run and the law of diminishing returns. So a number of you have studied this topic, I know before, when we've looked at it uh, with regards to business studies. So, economies of scale, Lucas, what do they mean? Okay, so an increase in output will lead to a reduction in average cost, whereas this economy to scale is an increase in output but an increase in cost. Okay, so this economy to scale is still that idea of an increase in output, but the idea that there will be an increase in average cost. So, in terms of the NXL economic specification, there are six of them that I need you to be able to feel confident in explaining why those average costs will fall. Okay? The difference is, is that you might need to apply this to a particular industry. And so on our video, we're going to look at the idea of uh, cruise ships as part of that process. So I want you to A, be able to tell me what it is in terms of an economy of scale and then try and apply an example from the video as part of it. Okay? So, six economies of scale then, like I said, I want you to try and relate them to that particular industry. So, go then, Lucas starts off please, which one do you want to go for? Uh, financial. Go for it. Is that when, like, so because I'm a large time to get better interest rates on things such as loans from the bank? Yeah, so often if you're going to increase output, so uh, if you are, if you increase output, it will be associated to an increase in the size of the loan, if you have a higher output, not only might the loan get bigger, but also there will be considered less for what attached to that loan. What's the benefit of lending to a company like a large organisation as opposed to like a small soldier? They'll give it back to you. So there's expected to be less risk. Okay, so if you increase output, you'll get a bigger loan, that will increase the size of the firm, that, sorry, you increase the size of the firm plus as a large firm, you are expected to have less risk, therefore that will reduce the interest rate on the loan. What's the obvious example then for the video? What would you take out a loan for? A ship. So size of loan to buy the cruise ship. That can be my application. Right, pick someone. Um, Matt. Nice. Matt, go for it, Matt, pick one. Risk bearing. Go for it. So it's like if you uh, fail on the product, you can spread the cost over your whole product portfolio. Yep, excellent. So if a uh, product or market fails, so we're thinking there, whether or not, why would a product or market fail? Um, Titanic crashing. Right, yeah, so it could be the actual physical boat itself, I guess, as part of that process. Uh, simply, people might not like it or want it. Yeah. yeah. What do we call that, that part when you're trying to develop something that's no, there's no guarantee of success? Maybe not ships, but when we think about like, oh, uh, Apple, what do they spend significant amounts on? I'm giving you the first letter. R&D. R&D. So product slash market fails. Also linked to sunk costs of R&D. What does a sunk cost mean? Heard of it at all? Anyone heard of a sunk cost? Yes. Yeah, so if you, something you've paid for and you can't get any return back for it if it doesn't work out for you. Okay, so the product market fails, some of the ID, these can then be spread over the whole product portfolio. So if you imagine the one that Matt used that I read at the extreme, I guess nevertheless still possibly acceptable. So if there was a uh, boat that sunk, then that can then get spread over future trips which will reduce that average cost. 
So future trips or passengers. Right, who are you going for next, Matt? George, uh, go for it. So uh, the bigger you are, the more you'll be able to purchase. So why was that lower? Uh, you got able, able to purchase more for like, in that video, like the bigger cruises. They'll be able to like, purchase more food and stuff in bulk, which will lower the unit costs. Okay, so if you're buying in bulk, and therefore you're more likely to obtain like a discount from your supplier. So what's the example? So they'll be able to buy more food at a lower unit cost. So the food at the restaurants uh, when they arrive at the port. So if you've got like 4,000 guests or whatever. Yeah. 4,000 avocados. Go on it, who's going next? Uh, go on, gosh. Managerial. Okay. So you mainly need like, that's like merger, get rid of one CEO or you build a bike, mainly one person in charge of each okay. thing. I'm not going to disagree with that with regards to the idea of organisations coming together, but what about if it's just a simple idea that you've increased the scale, so you're running more trips, or you've got um, like a larger boat as part of it. What, what is the job of a manager? What are they there to do? Right, so in that sense, the idea of like organising your factors of production, yeah, a little bit linked to the idea of enterprise to some extent, but a little bit lower down. If you've got a bigger organisation, what should happen to the quality of these? Why is that? You're right. If you're a good manager, where are you going to want to work? So the best companies. Best companies, yeah. So you, you might need to offer them a premium to get them to work there, but by having the best managers, what should you hope that they're able to do to your workforce? Improve right, perfect. So it's linked to that. So a large organisation, they will have the uh, either the brand or the uh, salary to be able to obtain the best managers that should then be able to coordinate the factors of production to increase productivity. For example, in a cruise ship, Josh? Okay, yeah, so it could be the captain. Yeah. So they can try and like reduce waste, they can make their cooks more productive with what they do. The captain could possibly try and make people on the ship more productive or use less fuel with what they're doing. Okay, two to go. Who you going for? Rivo. Rivo. Technical or marketing? Uh, technical. Go for it. So big co bigger companies will already have the resources and technology required to like innovate. Right. So you can apply technology in production. So when I use phrases like can, what does that stand for? Computer assisted manufacturing. Yeah, computer assisted manufacturing. And that would hopefully obviously increase productivity. There is another one as well. You may not have heard of this. Uh, it's referred to as the law of increased dimensions. Something you've ever heard of at all? No. The law of increased dimensions. I will explain that, but when we look at the idea of technology, what's the technology that we can then use on a boat? Um, navigation systems. Yeah. Excellent. So a little bit, I guess, like maybe like an autopilot that you get on an airplane style kind of component of it, or a navigation systems in terms of the best route to stop delays. Yeah. Reduce delays, such accidents, fuel use. Anyone heard of law of increased dimensions? No? So imagine if you were allowed to go out and you were getting a taxi, okay? What's the big difference if you're able to so go for a normal like four seater, then imagine that there's eight of you, what can you get? Like a little, yeah, okay, go for that. Like a little minibus style, like event. Does it double the cost? 
Do you pay twice as much even though there's twice as many of you? No. Why not? What doesn't cost twice as much then? Fuel. Fuel, yeah, perfect. So increased law of dimensions is that what often happens, if you increase size, um, energy costs don't increase proportionally. So fuel, so if you increase the size of a ship from 2,000 to 4,000, the fuel bill won't double. Okay, it will be less than that to carry that amount as part of that process. And that is a form of technical economy. If you want it to light a room, if you want it to heat a room, whatever it may be as part of it. Right, last one then, George, the marketing, please. <laughs> um, is that to do with... Oh, you're going to answer it yourself? What? I thought you were going to pick someone, but no, go for it, if you're going to answer it yourself. No, I, I, I wasn't No, you've started, now it's a nice one for you. Who's going to pick? Oh, was it? Yeah. What did, oh, oh, you just asked about law of dimensions. Apologies. Go over the video for the last one. Sure. Do you want to do it? Yeah. Perfect. The bigger you are, the more like, resources you'll have to be able to increase like, promotion and marketing. Okay. And often with that idea of like... So, like if you compare like Apple to someone like a smaller company, yeah. Apple have the resources to be able to spend thousands on adverts. So, what I would argue here in particular, so if I think about the idea of a promotion, it's often like a fixed cost, yeah? So if you think about um, like a TV advert, if that costs you 500,000, okay? And you have 500,000 units, then what's the cost per unit? One pound. Yeah, same advert. So still 500 grand, but now as soon as you've got a million units, average cost is now. <laughs> so again, promotion here will just be like TV advert for whatever that particular boat is or whatever else it might be as part of that process. Okay, what we can then do is then associate that to our diagram. So happy with those six. Yeah, like I mentioned, they're the ones that are appropriate for the specification. What's the last one that did for marketing? Now, what are we are aware? So we've got our reduction in average cost. Okay. And we mentioned this last lesson about the situation that you might then get to where you are no longer able to benefit from the economies of scale. Can I take this one off? So, probably what's most realistic, if we think about it, so quantity, Cost. So we've got this idea here. So average cost as we increase output is falling. And that's where we've got our economies of scale. At a certain point, so for example here, where average cost isn't changing, regardless of output, what's the logic there? Why might it not change or get, why can I not necessarily get any lower? Can I make There's a minimum wage point to get to, so that you can't... If we're thinking about it as an average cost, what might, what's, must my workers have had to have become that I can't make the unit costs any cheaper? Uh, what, like efficient? So I, I can't get any more productive. Okay, when I think about this with uh, like your purchasing economies of scale, if you are buying in bulk from a supplier, there is still a minimum point where that supplier can't go below because ultimately it would end up that they'd start making what oh, sort of a loss. So even if you are like a Tesco's and you're buying from Coca-Cola, there will be a point where that discount can't get any more, the workers can't get any more productive. 
Can anyone remember what this area was called? Constant. Yeah, constant returns to scale. Okay, so this is a situation, for example, where you are unable to obtain um, any more economies of scale. So, for example, your workers are like. So you're productively efficient, you can't improve upon that, you are unable to obtain a discount from your supplier, etc. etc. It's part of that process. Otherwise they'd be making like a loss. So we then get to that situation here where we can start to see the problem of diseconomies of scale. What did we argue was the main reason for its onset? Said this last lesson. management side of things, it's too complex to control everything and everyone, so productivity is So, we get a significantly large workforce, you can then have problems with regards to a reduction in productivity. So you mentioned there, Maybe the idea of like management and supervision. If we take kind of a historic approach or attitude to workers, we only work for money, we don't like work, we derive disutility from it, so workers are kind of perceived as being lazy or trying to hide away from work. The capacity to hide would be much greater at that point, and therefore um, the inability to manage or supervise them. Yeah. What else did we say? How's it going to make you feel being part of an organisation? Alienated. Alienated, yeah. What was the logic? You just want work out of like, like, scale, like over a million. And you don't feel like the other person's in the company, you're just there. Like so the idea that you're kind of like a number rather than a person in terms of how you're treated. That can lead to demotivation, and again, your productivity will start. <coughs> Finally, what was the other aspect that we've mentioned as well? When we talk about the idea that you are employing so many people, when you are the single buyer, and not the monopsony buyer of labour, they often face what in their labour market? So there's often an increase in trade union density. Why is that? Harley, you mentioned it. What's the monopsony buyer's diagram? What do they try to do? They like try to uh, like increase wages by like, that's your face like in industrial action where your staff won't be working or like legal action. Yeah, and why they what did they what what they're gonna try and do to your wages? Uh, increase them or increase. Why would I be upset if they increase my wage? I know, uh, because the third uh, what I mean is the trade union are trying to get the third right, to okay. increase the wages. So remember this idea? We had that problem of that rapidly increasing marginal cost of labour because if you employ one person and you're doing the same job, what do you then have to do with all the other workers? Equal Pay Act. Equal Pay Act. So yeah. Everyone, yeah. Everyone gets paid the same. So if we're then using the idea of marginal revenue product theory, I would employ here a quantity Q which puts wages, like pushes them down compared to where they'd normally be in a competitive labour market. If I'm operating with a shortage, that's putting a pressure and burden on my workforce. So, increases the chance of trade union density, 
that increases the risk of industrial action. That again can lead to loss of output. Okay. Realistically, so this is kind of our long run average cost curve. When we are going to draw this, when we look at the theory of the firm, we wouldn't draw anything of kind of this scale or size. Okay, realistically, what we're going to look at is costs, uh, output, and we'll generally draw a point and then we'll just come straight back up again. Okay, and we often need to do that because what have I also got to generally include as my other cost curve? Margin. And marginal cost intersects it at its lowest point. So I need to, so this is what we'll get used to drawing. That these are the principles that undersit it, and there might be things that I'm assuming aren't going to occur, like this stuff here. But this will be what we traditionally draw, like our supply and demand traditionally draw it. Okay?